Item number, SCP-623. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-623 is located in the annex of University. The entrance to SCP-623 is to be guarded by two level three security personnel at all times. In-room monitoring must take place every hour for no longer than five minutes. Extended observation of SCP-623 is done from an external observation room through remote monitoring devices. Personnel operating within the observation room are required to switch out every five minutes. An additional level three security guard is required to escort any observers out of the observation room and must not enter until needed. All personnel subjected to SCP-623 for longer than five minutes are to be taken for psychological re-evaluation regardless of direct or indirect exposure. No photos, videos, or sound recordings are permitted near SCP-623. Sketch drawings and mock-ups must be approved by command-level personnel before being released. All photos, mock-ups, or recreations of SCP-623 are to be destroyed immediately. SCP-623 may safely come into contact with room-altering SCPs as any major alterations to the room neutralizes SCP-623's effect. However, room-altering SCPs will still carry their same inherent dangers. Addendum 623-1 All testing on individual subjects may last no longer than six hours. Security monitoring observing personnel are now required to remove observing personnel before the fifth minute has elapsed, possibly earlier if needed. Description SCP-623 is a room of roughly 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven meters, built in 1960 by Dr. H. D., a biochemical professor at University, built as part of Data Expunged. Dr. D. was subsequently arrested for his activities, but not before his students and followers began making copies of the room. As of 2000, at least recreations of SCP-623 have been found across college campuses. The room is quite large and consists of the following objects. One blue couch. One red couch. One green couch. One white beanbag chair. One circular table emulating a color wheel. Seven chairs surrounding aforementioned table. Seven multicolored lighting fixtures. All of the furniture is arranged in a unique mathematical-based pattern, coinciding with the patterns on both the walls and floor. All of the furniture has been nailed to the floor, most likely prior to painting. Because of the high ceilings, the eye is naturally drawn up to the psychedelic patterns on the walls. The arrangement of the furniture, the patterns surrounding the room, and their combined acoustics have a profound effect on mental behavior, regardless if the affected observer is deaf or blind. These effects extend through remote monitoring devices, still photos, and audio recording devices. Upon entering SCP-623, personnel have described a feeling of relaxation. After three minutes from entering SCP-623, personnel are incapable of violence, becoming docile, and harmless. For the effects after five minutes, refer to document number 623-1. Due to the room's pacifying effects, all attempts at removing the furniture are futile. Exiting SCP-623 exhibits inverse withdrawal effects. Immediately after observation has stopped, observers will feel an intense jolt back to the outside world, which becomes significantly stronger over time spent inside. Other side effects vary over time. Upon leaving SCP-623 within one minute of entering, personnel have reported feeling uneasy, jittery, and slightly paranoid. After leaving SCP-623 three minutes from entering, personnel have exhibited anxiety, fear, and in worse cases, depression. For effects after five minutes, refer to document number 623-1.
Document number 6231. Effects of entering and exiting SCP-623 after 5 minutes or longer. Test number 1. 5 to 10 minutes. Test subject. Subject D-251. Male Hispanic. 31 years old. 101 kilograms. 180 centimeters. Observed behavior within SCP-623. After 5 elapsed minutes, Subject D-251 seen giggling and mumbling slurred phrases. After six elapsed minutes, D-251 begins hugging White Beanbag Chair, declaring his love for it repeatedly. After seven elapsed minutes, D-251 requested various junk foods over the remote monitoring devices. The request was denied. After eight minutes elapsed time, D-251 began to dance around singing what could possibly be identified as a 60s folk song. From 9 to 10 minutes in, the subject continued staggering around, laughing. Observed behavior upon exiting SCP-623. Subject D-251 seen actively yelling at staff and threatening violence upon leaving SCP-623. D-251 punched Agent S and was quickly restrained. In detainment, D-251 was observed crying and screaming on the floor, threatening suicide. The bouts of intense rage and intense despair lasted for the next three days. D-251 was transferred off-site. Test number two, 30 minutes to an hour. Test subject, subject D-252, male Caucasian, 28 years old, 77 kilograms. 174 centimeters. Observed behavior within SCP-623. Subject D-252 displayed similar behavior to Subject D-251, with only minor differences for the first 10 minutes. After 20 minutes, the subject began to look flush, exhibiting symptoms not too dissimilar from sexual activity. Subject complained of being thirsty and hungry. Due to safety concerns and to avoid a retest, D-252 was given two liters of brand soda with a large pepperoni pizza and brand onion ring flavored snacks. Subject ate food relatively quickly, forgot what he was doing halfway through, staggered around laughing for the next five minutes, and continued eating. At 40 minutes elapsed time, subject repeated the word indubitably in different inflections and accents. This continued for the next seven minutes. Agent P, who was observing at the time, began to laugh along with D-252 before being forcefully replaced by Agent G. Upon removal, Agent P threatened to quit and expose the Foundation out of anger, but was safely detained and recovered in the next three days. Near the end of the first hour, Subject D-252 began to remove shirt pants, all undergarments, and proceeded to <laughs> observed behavior upon exiting SCP-623. Immediately after leaving SCP-623, Subject D-252 began to scream violently and spastically attack its escorts. D-252 was restrained and detained. Upon being released into its cell, the subject began to claw his own face off in horror screaming about how he still sees it without his eyes. Subject was then placed in restraints for the remainder of observation to ensure he could no longer harm himself or others. Subject did not recover for nearly two weeks and was later transferred off-site. Test number three, one day. Test subject, subject D-253, male Caucasian, 35 years old, 118 kilograms, 198 centimeters. Additional information should include that subject D-253 was previously charged with serial murder, animal cruelty, data expunged. Their psychological evaluation showed an additional history of sociopathy and regular outbursts of anger. Observed behavior within SCP-623. Subject D-253 was escorted into the room in a full-body restraint. Upon entering, the subject, who had previously threatened to kill Agent S, as soon as he got out of the restraints, 
began apologizing profusely. Before the first five minutes elapsed, D-253 began to engage Agent S in a conversation of a sophomoric manner. Agent S was escorted out of the room quickly, displaying a headache and emotional turmoil upon leaving. Subject D-253 exhibited the behavior of the previous test subjects and was given the appropriate food and water to last through the test. By the second hour, the subject requested to use a latrine. The request was denied, but Agent G was able to bring the necessary equipment into the room without disrupting its effects. By the fifth hour, the subject's behavior deteriorated into repetitive fidgeting and incoherent rambling. Subject suspected to be hallucinating. Subject fell asleep around six hours elapsed time. Subject later awoke 12 hours later, having great difficulty standing back up. D-253 spent the next six hours laughing and babbling on the floor before being escorted out. Observed behavior upon exiting SCP-623. Upon leaving, Subject D-253 began to convulse shortly before the autopsy of Subject D-253 proved useless as observed behavior upon exiting SCP-623. Upon leaving, Subject D-253 began to convulse shortly before collapsing to the ground and expelling all bodily fluids. In addition, Subject D-253 lost his hair, eyes, teeth, finger, and toenails. The autopsy of Subject D-253 proved useless as there was no organic matter left to study. Studying Subject D-253's bodily fluids also proved futile as there was no cell life to be found. Addendum 623-2 It is unknown what causes after six hours within SCP-623, but it may be part of the room's effects on the body itself. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-622, Desert in a Can, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.